In order to create the petals for a magnolia flower, I need two different size cutters. I like to use circle cutters for this flower. I have one that's an inch in diameter and another one that's an inch and a quarter in diameter. I've rolled out my gum paste and I've cut a few of each sizes. I'll need four of each size petal. The technique that I use to create each petal is exactly the same. I start with my circle of gum paste and I'm going to hold it in between my two fingers, inserting a wire into each one. Each of the petals is individually wired to give me maximum flexibility when I put the flower together. I'll brush off the extra glue that's on my hand so that it doesn't become an icky sticky mess. I'm going to insert my wire into the gum paste just about an eighth of an inch. It doesn't have to go in very far. That's about half the width of my pinky, just a little tiny bit. Then, in order to create super thin petals, I'll dip my fingers into powdered sugar and I'm going to pinch the edges, tuck the edges as if I'm snapping. I'm going to pinch and roll my first finger and my thumb all the way around the edge of my petal. This will allow my petal size to be distorted and also to create a little bit more interest as I look at my petal edge. I turn it upside down and I want to add a little bit of veining to my petals. Again, I'm gonna load my fingertips up with powdered sugar and press. I'll start by pressing the edges into my veiner. Now this veiner was created from a rose petal. We took a rose petal and pushed it into food grade silicone. Uh, if you don't have the ability to make your own, you can purchase veiners from a craft store or a baking supply store. Now one thing I want to make sure, a magnolia petal is not actually round, so I'm going to push the tip of the petal up and push it into kind of like a little tip, so it's almost, it's not quite sharp, but it does have a little, it pulls to a little bit of a tip at the end. And then I can push in the middle just to make sure the whole entire piece is veined. I can pull it away from my veiner and turn it over in my hands. You can see all of the texture that we've put onto our sugar petal. Now, if I were to leave this in my hand to dry, it would dry flat, and petals in nature are not flat at all. So I have a tray of spoons here. I'm gonna rest my flour into one of the spoons and pushing it, and that will allow it to dry so that it's cupped, both front and back and right and left. When I create my sugar magnolia petals, I need to have four from this small size and four large petals. The technique that I use for each petal is exactly the same. I'll let them all dry overnight before I go to assemble.